Ryan, what's on your radar? So in the fall of 2017, Jared Kushner made a secret trip to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia for a private meeting with the country's crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, that lasted nearly till dawn. Just days later, MBS, as he's known, launched an unprecedented crackdown on his wealthy rivals in the country, consolidating his power and extracting billions by torturing many one-time allies. We subsequently reported in The Intercept that Kushner had conspicuously obtained sensitive Saudi-related intelligence, including the names of Saudis who were not fully loyal to MBS, just before heading to Saudi Arabia. We don't know exactly what Kushner and MBS talked about till dawn, but we do know that MBS later told confidants that Kushner had shared those names with him. We also know that in the midst of the torture inside the Ritz, Trump tweeted his support of the purge. In June 2017, MBS and the UAE launched a blockade of Gulf rival Qatar, a country where the U.S. had a base, or still has a base, with 10,000 American service members on it. Kushner persuaded Trump to back the blockade. His advice, it turned out, had come after Kushner had tried to shake down Qatar to bail out his failing real estate company. Trump held a press conference undercutting Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's effort to quickly end the blockade, and he read a statement that had been handwritten by Kushner. The nation of Qatar, unfortunately, has historically been a funder of terrorism at a very high level. And in the wake of that conference, nations came together and spoke to me about confronting Qatar over its behavior. So we had a decision to make. Do we take the easy road or do we finally take a hard but necessary action? We have to stop the funding of terrorism. I decided, along with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, our great generals and military people, the time had come to call on Qatar to end its funding. They have to end that funding and its extremist ideology in terms of funding. I want to call on all of the nations to stop immediately supporting terrorism. Stop teaching people to kill other people. Stop filling their minds with hate and intolerance. I won't name other countries, but we are not done solving the problem, but we will solve that problem. That blockade ended up lasting all the way through the entire Trump administration, only being lifted after Biden's election. So aside from whatever Kushner told MBS and Riyadh, MBS already knew he had Kushner, quote, in his pocket, as he later told those around him. Once he got away with the blockade and the Ritz crackdown, MBS was emboldened. And the next year, the same crew that rounded up people at the Ritz kidnapped and butchered Jamal Khashoggi. In Yemen, MBS ramped up the war Saudi Arabia and the UAE were waging. It very much appeared that Kushner was using the power of U.S. foreign policy as leverage for his own personal business interests. Now, to nobody's surprise, Kushner is back in the region, shaking down the shakes for more cash, this time for what he's calling an investment fund, Affinity Partners. The sovereign wealth funds for Qatar and the UAE have turned him down so far, with the New York Times reporting that, quote, Emirati rulers saw Mr. Kushner as an ally, but questioned his track record in business, unquote. Saudi Arabia, however, hasn't had those same concerns, and the Times reports that the kingdom is now negotiating a major investment in Kushner's affinity partners. What makes this all the more troubling is that MBS, as we've reported here, has been deliberately keeping oil production low to raise gas prices and punish Biden for not meeting with him or recognizing him as the official ruler of the country. And while Democrats have had endless amounts of resources to look into January 6th, they've shown barely any interest in looking into what Kushner was up to. Like MBS, if he can test the limits and see no consequences, he'll just keep pushing. And if he makes it back into the White House, U.S. foreign policy will have been sold to Kushner's highest bidder. So this is one of them. To me, if everything looks as 
everything is as it looks, mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest scandals of like the last hundred years. Like a, a senior official who happens to be the son-in-law of the president using his official capacity to put pressure on people that his company is trying to extract money from in order to bail out his own businesses. Then afterwards, shaking them down again for investments into his this affinity partners, you know, private equity uh, business that he's, he's up to and getting a ton of money from Saudi Arabia while his father-in-law is contemplating a run to return to the White House. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding Seems me? bad. Seems bad. I mean, it's See? the kind of stuff that we've just almost become. So you asked, why are, there, why are Democrats not having here? Why are they not yeah. looking into this? Right. It's not, it's just not, it's not interesting enough to be. I don't it's know like why it isn't. It's, it's very interesting. Obvious. Maybe it's too obvious. Maybe, <laughs> like maybe the, too out in the, open. the corrupt, right. The corruption of the, of the Trump family of people in the Trump orbit is, is so, is so in our right. faces. It's so, is so it's we, like, we can't, we know that. So what? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so his business partners blockaded a country right. with a U.S. Army base because, uh, you know, or after they declined to invest in his firm. Uh, right. Uh, okay. What do you? And and if Trump runs, millions of people will vote for him anyway, and <laughs> they won't care. Right. He's a deal maker. He's a he's a deal maker. Yeah, yeah. But then, but then, but the fact that Joe Biden's son, in a oh, very yes, yeah, underhanded yeah, yeah, yeah. way, attempted unsuccessfully to peddle some influence will be held as a, as a, you know, well, no, Biden can't be the president. Right. Because the, of that. The, failing to be corrupt is a crime, <laughs> but succeeding in it. Right. That's cool. I know the hypocrisy of the, of Trump supporters on that front is just, is just a, like the, and, and yes, there has been, you know, Hunter Biden benefited from nepotism certainly sure. is a shady character. Hunter Biden should not be the president. If Hunter Biden were running for president, I, I would think that would be very much. He, he should, should not be. be senior advisor to Biden. He should not he be a just, senior advisor yeah. to Biden either. Uh, right. Trump did appoint right. his, his corrupt family members <laughs> to senior, uh, senior official positions, but yeah, wild. Yeah. De Democrats should look into more of this stuff and less of January 6th, just like you said. We kind of have January 6th figured out. Yeah, it's, not, it's not yeah. a huge mystery. We all yeah. kind of know what happened. <laughs> it was quite bad. We had an opportunity to hold the president responsible for it. They didn't. We got to move on. There's yeah. nothing more that can be done, frankly. Right. right. And there is something you can do about this because yeah. Kushner is doing it in the open, in an ongoing basis, and still advising his father-in-law and plans to return to the White House. Mm. Anyway, looking forward to seeing what's on your radar.